There have been so many positives about starting this little podcast, but by far the best thing about it has been meeting new people and getting to tell their stories. I don't remember how I first found Catherine, but I think it was through our mutual friends on Instagram. And at the time, she was the newly crowned Miss San Francisco, so I thought that would be fun. So I took a chance and messaged her over Instagram. A little while later, she replied back and said she'd love to come on the podcast, so we were excited. And Maddie and I had a great time chatting with Kat over Zoom, and it was really obvious back then that she is one of the nicest, most gracious people you'll ever meet. And as a matter of fact, Catherine even came on to co-host with me later when we interviewed ballet dancer Frances Chung in May. Well, fast forward to June 2022, when Catherine was headed to Fresno to represent San Francisco County in the Miss California competition. And you can probably guess by now, Catherine won! So, we're doing a little catch-up with our old friend Catherine, who also happens to be Miss California. And this time we get to do it in person in my classroom. I hope you enjoy hearing more of Catherine's story, and as always, thanks for listening! Hey everyone, welcome back to the Infatuation Podcast. We're coming to you live, well, semi-live, we're recording in person for the first time in my classroom. We're, you don't like it when I tell you, when I say what school we get. We are at a school in San Francisco (laughs) near the water. (laughs) And we are recording in person with some old pals. So it's just a couple old friends hanging out, even though we just met. (laughs) Yeah, for the first time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everyone is super busy and some exciting things have happened. So let's start with Super Producer Madison. You had a birthday this summer. Oh, yes, I did. August 1st, I turned 17. Woo-hoo! Actually, you're both summer birthdays, right? Yeah. When's your birthday? July 23rd. Oh, oh my God, we're Leos? <gasps> yes. Oh, no. That's amazing. <laughs> Leo, <laughs> the See? Leo power right now. Okay. Absolutely. So Maddie is now 17 and she is a senior in high school. Yeah. What'd you do all summer? You didn't. You did one recording with me, but what else mm-hmm. did you do? Um, I was writing a lot of original music and working with my music teacher on a lot of projects. I told you about the process I was doing with the ten yeah. songs, right? So yeah. Anything we could listen to? Not yet. I'm. I'm. This coming song that I'm doing, which is the fifth song, is going to be completely written and arranged and everything by me. So I'm excited for it, okay. and it's it's really really fun. Also, my dream school's NYU. Tish. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did an online course about the music industry. It's called Music Industry Essentials. And it was really good because it was just like an all encompassing course about business, marketing, and even like the performance aspects of it too. So yeah, I was pretty busy, but it was really fun. All right. So uh, awesome. are we going to get an announcement? Can we, can the Infatuation Podcast be the place that people hear it first? Perhaps. I, <laughs> I will say that right now I am trying to write an EP. Okay. So wow. All right. That's oh what I will gosh. say. All right, people. And you're going to be playing guitar on it? Um, Probably a little bit. Okay. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. Are you going to come back ever to the podcast? Or? Yes, I am. Right. I got some cool people. I'll, I'll let you know. I we know. Cool I've just people. been busy, but you know, it's... It's time to work again. Yeah. Get Summer's the over. Grind, get, get the grind back on. All Rise right. and grind. <laughs> yeah, so thanks for coming along and staying late. We're after school right now on a yeah. Wednesday. And our special guest is Catherine Liang. Welcome back, Catherine. Hey, hey. It's good to be back and finally meet you both in person I for know, the first time. I know. It's like, <laughs> I feel like I've known you for a long time. But I know. we've never actually met. I know. Been since April. And yeah. Constantly just following one another on social media, which Basically. is, I feel like, the basic way everyone kind of gets to know one another now. And I feel like we have all these mutual friends. Too. I know. <laughs> like, I yeah. keep seeing you, Sabrina. I feel like we're, so, yeah, we're, so, I feel like we're really lucky to have a little podcast family. We, we're starting mm-hmm. to have a little, yeah, the, the San Francisco Asian community is pretty, pretty tight. Pretty so tight, yeah. We all kind of know each other. 
Funny well, enough, I'm actually seeing Sabrina tomorrow. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, this, so, is the, this is the way it is. We just keep bumping into, well, we don't bump into each other, but we bump into people that we know. So. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So if, if audience out there, if you don't recall, we interviewed Catherine, uh, when was it? Back in April, and I think the episode came out early May, and she was uh, Miss San Francisco. She still is, but she is the reigning Miss San Francisco, and we're interviewing her, her and we were talking about, oh, so Miss California is coming up in June. Good luck with that. And we had, you know, we were we, we, we support kind of a, a small part in your campaign for Miss big California. Part, big part, <laughs> But uh, it was super exciting. And um, actually, on June 25th, Maddie and I were recording our episode with Gene Yang. And we were like, hey, today is Miss California pageant. And we looked up on social media and was like, hey, look, she won the talent competition on Friday or Thursday. Mm -hmm. And they were like, hey, she won the preliminary contest on whatever day that was. We're like, what does that mean? Is she going to win this whole thing? We're like, I don't know. And then later that night, I saw a couple posts that you had won Miss California. I know. I was so happy. It was, so, it was like, we know her. I can't believe we actually know Miss California. And so you are the reigning Miss California 2022. Yes, I am. And Crazy. <laughs> the next step is Miss America competition oh. in December. In December in Uncasville, Connecticut. Oh, okay. So we're going back <laughs> east, but we'll get there. We'll get there later. But let's talk about so some exciting stuff has happened to everybody. Well, and I'm still a teacher, but <laughs> <laughs> but exciting stuff has happened, especially to Catherine. So let's catch up with her and talk a little bit more about the last couple months. So uh, we caught up with you in April, and you had been Miss San Francisco since like January, right? Or... Uh, since November, oh, two oh, days that's, that's before right. Thanksgiving, yeah. That's right, that's <laughs> right. So you, you were just kind of feeling it out, and you were doing some modeling gigs for the city and, and doing some appearances. And, you know, San Francisco is a small, kind of, kind of a small little town, if you think about it. And, mm -hmm. and we were like, oh, that, that's great, you're Miss San Francisco. And then what happened since then? So you were preparing for... The Miss California competition. What what did that involve? Oh gosh, a lot of late night practices and a lot of late night interview sessions. Um, but I think I was really lucky enough, like you said, San Francisco is a very small and tight knit community, but it has a pretty big like international presence. That's true. Yeah. Um, and so anyone remotely kind of. I guess like ha who's had their name in the newspaper, you kind of know about them from San Francisco. Uh -huh. um, so I was lucky enough to get connected to a former Miss California, Crystal Lee, who I mentioned last time on the podcast, mm -hmm. her kind of network. Um, so I met with people like Francis Kong, who became a really inspirational life mentor, who became my interview coach. And then Brian Louie, who works um, as an educator at Sutra Elementary School. Uh -huh. He quite literally fixed my evening gown walk two nights before I left for the Miss California competition. Wow. And when I say fix, I mean, I was walking same arm, same leg, and it just looks <laughs> so cringy. But we managed to do it. We practiced, I think, up until like midnight one of those nights. Wow. <laughs> so I really give him props for having the patience and tolerance. How did you get through life not knowing how to walk? <laughs> you know, you would be amazed how difficult it is to walk on heels and look remotely know, elegant. Yeah, true. Mr. But Chin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah. I'm kidding. But uh, that's crazy that you had the revamp. Yeah. Your, your run, is it called a runway walk kind of thing? Uh, they call it red carpet walk. Red and carpet walk. That's something I kind of learned um, just through somehow jumping into modeling. Modeling walking is very different yeah. from pageant yeah. walking. That's so. crazy. So <laughs> literally right before you're yes. tweaking everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're, you're preparing. So a lot of piano practice. Yep. And then just interview like... Do is there kind of a database of questions that you know these these coaches kind of go through and you, and you work on thinking on your feet? And there's kind of a general framework. They'll definitely ask you about your social impact initiative or like a platform that you're really passionate about, your talent, how are you involved in the community, and anything related towards current events. But I think what I loved about it is that you never knew how they were going to ask you the question, uh, yeah. so you could get 
a topic um, as controversial as Russia and Ukraine, and sure. you get 10,000 different ways of being asked that question. Yeah. So it really makes you think on your feet yeah. um, and prepares you. And does someone like slap your wrist if you say, um, or, you know? I hope not, because I know <laughs> I'm at fault for that. <laughs> but I think it's definitely part of the interview training is learning to just be confident in your opinion and not... Right stutter or put filler words yeah i'm definitely still working on that super guilty of that myself yeah (laughs) i'm even thinking of it right now yeah yeah, don't say um (laughs) well i have the edit button so i get to edit myself so i don't sound as as stuttering as i normally have yeah it's really impressive though i really don't know how you guys speak with so much eloquence and poise there's this i don't know if she's a former miss utah or the current miss utah but i follow her on tiktok and she's she's so amazing and I'm just like, I don't know. She's such a role model. You guys are so smart and well-spoken. I really don't know. Sasha Sloan. I think so. Okay, yeah. She was last year's Miss Utah, very much a TikToker, and I think kind of pushed forward the envelope of like what a future Miss America could look like. It's like they can be an influencer in a way. Yeah. Yeah. And they can be on social media. seems like it's a part of it now. Yeah, Yeah. definitely. Initially, I thought it was just... um, like a beauty pageant but it's mm-hmm. so much more you guys no they're like the best of us i know <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's the olympics of pageants it, it is. really yeah. really really is yeah. yeah no and and some like emma Broyles is like eight 19 like she's super young like a freshman right she's, she's like, 21 now oh, okay, okay. um but she is an ra at her university yeah. and you think about it she's just like any other girl but she just wears a very very shiny hundred year old <laughs> crown so i mean <laughs> wait a little history yeah. to it is it is it actually like passed down the same one not the same one but this year or her year they made a yellow diamond miss america crown to celebrate the hundred years of history uh, so well, that's the only one in in the world that is complete yellow diamond wow That's yeah cool. yeah yeah so yeah i mean it's just it's it's and, and we'll talk about this right so you you went from miss san francisco which was you know kind of a small competition right mm-hmm. what'd you say you said six gals six gals yeah to miss california and and, and i like i said last time I, I went to the miss santa clara county mm-hmm. and and there were clearly some some young women who it was their first time and they were just trying it out like like you said you tried just walked in with a jc penny dress and was just trying yeah. right <laughs> so there's those people at the county level but by the time you get to miss california these gals are people who have won multiple pageants absolutely have been some of them training for a decade or more and yeah so did you feel that when you walked in there like everyone knew what they were doing and everyone oh, ten thousand percent i think even when i was practicing with brian for walking i had a massive case of imposter syndrome mm-hmm. where i was like if i can't even walk properly how am i supposed <laughs> to get on a stage with 33 incredible quite literally the best of the best of yeah. California. Yeah. Um, everyone is top of their class at their school. They've probably graduated with top honors. They're very articulate, very talented in whatever um, art that they choose. So it's, I think at the end of the day, it's like kind of getting out of your headspace of I'm competing against 33 other people, but, you know, thinking about competing against yourself. Yeah. And I think that really helped to calm my nerves. Uh-huh. Not to say I wasn't a nervous wreck behind <laughs> stage, but at least held it together a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let's talk about that week. So the, it's the week in June, June 23, 24, 25. 25 roughly, and, yeah. and you said you were actually down there for five days. And mm-hmm. It was Fresno area. Oh, lovely. 100 lovely degree weather. <laughs> Central California. Yeah. <laughs> And so you're there. Who was your entourage? You have your mom with you. You have your coach. Who did you have with you? I had my mom, my dad, and my brother and sister-in-law who flew all the way from Florida because they knew this was kind of my last pageant hurrah, I would say. So they wanted to come out and support. And then I also had a wonderful fellow Leo sister who I met actually while I was doing Miss Los Angeles Chinatown. Her name is Joyce Luck. And she did my makeup for the... LA Chinatown um, Lunar New Year Parade. Mm-hmm. And she kindly offered to do my makeup and hair for mm-hmm. Miss California, which was such a godsend because mm-hmm. I'm horrible at mm-hmm. hair and makeup. <laughs> so having just someone there to support you is an amazing, an amazing feeling. And then 
Very surprisingly, a couple of people that I just met through doing Miss San Francisco ended up driving all the way to Fresno oh, wow. to come and watch. So oh, wow. that kind of sent it over the edge and made me really emotional <laughs> the last night yeah. just seeing that kind of support. So. That is cool. Mm-hmm. And so what's what's day one? Day one is just getting your feet under you. <laughs> yeah, just settling in, orientation, and a lot of rehearsal. Mm. Yeah, because they didn't send any videos ahead of time for like opening number. Mm. So everything had to be learned in two days before the actual show. Okay, so you're doing a dance, you're doing a... Yeah, mostly walking patterns, which oh. I think was really fair for people who were not dancers. Um, but yes, definitely a lot of choreography. Uh, uh... <laughs> Okay, then what's what's next on the agenda? So two days of that and just getting to hang out with the girls. And then you have two nights of preliminary competition. So the you basically do the entire, uh, all four phases of competition, but it's a preliminary attempt at it. So night one, I was part of beta group. I was actually contestant number 34 of 34. Okay. So I was the caboose. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> um, so I did my, what was it? My evening gown and on stage question that night. And then I also had my talent performance the following night. Um, the morning of the first competition, I actually had my interview. So my private 10 minute interview with a panel of judges. So I just, honestly, there's a lot of people that think about like the strategy of diversifying what phases a competition across uh-huh. the three days. But I was like, I just want to get done with speaking. So I never have to yeah. talk again for the next couple of days. <laughs> You're just surviving. You're just like, I just yeah. want to get through it. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. So, so the preliminary is, is counted towards the final or it's, it's separate? Yes. So the preliminary, they judge um, where like talent accounts for, I think, around 35 percent. And then the other phases of competition kind of fill in the rest. And then all of your preliminary scores end up uh, compiling into a composite score, which factors into your final night score if you make the top t- 10 or 11. Uh-huh. Yeah. So it was good that you're winning these preliminaries. Yes. We weren't sure. We were like, what does it mean? Is, <laughs> yeah. it, is she, yeah. is she slate? Is she ahead? Or is she, you know, does it just a warm up? So that was good that you're winning those. Mm-hmm. The preliminary awards, I guess, are given based off of which competition group you're in. So if you're an alpha group, you are not so much compared, but you are judged according to that select group of uh, uh, 17 girls. Uh, and then if you're in beta group, same thing. Okay. So you don't know the total score yet at that point. You're just no, kinda... so you're actually, as a contestant, not allowed to ever see your score at local, state, or national oh, ever. level. Mm-hmm. Okay, so y- you don't know. I won by a lot. You don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Okay. I think the idea is the mystery. Sure. But, sure. yeah. Okay, so the talent went well. You, you felt like you nailed it. Talent went well. I was a little bit nervous, and I think I had a few hiccups, I won't lie, but... I felt like it was one of the first times in my entire piano career where I just felt completely in tune with the music. And I'm sure Madison can can relate when you like (laughs) find a song that you're so passionate about. Mm. It it isn't about like memorizing notes, but it's just like pouring your heart out on the stage. So it was pretty cool. (laughs) <laughs> that must be hard, too, because you, you practice it hundreds of times. Hundreds of times, yeah. And yet, on this moment, you have to somehow express something new or express something yeah. that you want to express at that moment. Exactly. And I think that's something that pageantry has helped me with because I grew up as a classically trained pianist. So you're you're always taught to do, you know, perfect hand technique, perfect rhythm, perfect tunement. But when it comes to something that's a little bit more show many or show woman y, uh-huh. uh-huh. um, it's more about a performance than like pouring more emotion into it. Yeah. So yeah. that was definitely a fun challenge to learn. <laughs> Did you feel like you nailed it? At the end, you're like, yes, I nailed it. I think so. I rewatched <laughs> the video after prelims, and I just had that moment where I threw my hands up yeah. at the final <laughs> note, and I was uh-huh. like, I literally could see or hear myself go like, yes, I did yeah, it. So yeah. it was just so relieving, and you could breathe mm. finally. You're holding your breath for a solid minute, 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah. So it's really only 90 seconds there. Mm-hmm. Wow. 90 seconds. Yeah. That is crazy. Can you imagine? Wait, so how long was the actual piece? Like how did you I don't how did you time it? So I play Fantasy Impromptu by Frederick Chopin, which is a 15-page piece, so I think roughly <laughs> yeah, eight, yeah. eight-ish minutes. Yeah. So there was a lot of quite literally taking scissors to score music score and just chopping oh. and pasting everything. Uh. But yeah, so 
I was very lucky to have an amazing piano teacher that kind of helped guide me through that because I'm not creative in that sense. Mm. But yeah, um, I can't remember if I said mentioned last time, but the final section of that score, I think the roughly last 20 seconds, she hand wrote every single note uh, and rearranged the ending. Just yeah. for you. Just yeah. For this, this That's so second. special. Yeah, yeah. So it's very, very close to home. <laughs> Did you have, was it? It limited to 90 seconds or the piece that you played was 90 seconds? So every girl only gets 90 seconds to perform any talent of her choosing. Um, if you go over 90 seconds, then you, they start deducting points. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I see. Because yeah. it does add up after if you do 30 plus girls and then oh, each yeah. 90 seconds yeah. and then rolling on mm-hmm. and off the piano, setting up the stage, cleaning that's, the that's stage. so hard though. Like if you yeah. had a talent that maybe took a while to develop you know, yeah <laughs> just, yeah just to get into it okay so and and so we're, we're live audience though this this one had a live audience and you had friends and family and mm-hmm. a, a big auditorium was it like thousands of people or was it i would say hundreds. hundreds um it was oddly enough it worked in our favor we used to do it at the um sarayan theater in fresno but this year we did it at the paul shigoyan theater it's right between the city of fresno and um city of clovis and for a lot of musicians, we were super happy because it is built to be an orchestra hall. With the acoustics. Yes. Yeah, so it was yeah. so nice because traditionally it's mostly for dancers or kind of theatrical performances. But for musicians and singers, this was such a blessing to yeah. have. So Yeah, yeah. that's cool. <laughs> and, who, and who's judging this? Are, are these folks musicians themselves or... It's just a wide variety of celebrities slash, you know, committee people. Or Yeah, so it really depends. We don't know the judges ahead of time, technically. Um, but this year, we were lucky enough to have someone who was a choreographer slash jazzercise instructor, someone who works in social media and brand marketing. So they really heavily emphasized on looking at your social media presence and seeing, were you actually showing proof of concept of what you mentioned about like serving your community oh, were wow. you actually putting um your words into action we had someone who is a long time pageant participant and pageant coordinator um, we also had someone in the fashion industry slash involved in philanthropic causes so it really spans the gamut which i loved because when you yeah. have a diverse set of judges i think you're able to relate with every single one of them in some small fashion yeah Okay, so on the night, we are done with all the competition. Is it, does it run long, a couple hours on stage? Is... Roughly two to three hours, oh, yeah. Wow. yeah. Okay, so you're there. And, and you're feeling, were you feeling pretty good because you had the preliminary win under your belt and the talent win under your belt? I guess in some sense now in retrospect, yes. But in the moment, I honestly felt more pressure building <laughs> because for context, actually, um, for the two nights of prelims, the same girl who won her night of talent, the night that I won my evening gown and on stage question, we double prelim awarded. Uh, yeah. So we flipped awards yeah. because we we're in different groups. So it was just her and I yeah. kind of in the end. But actually, it's funny enough, she's a friend that I did the program with nine years ago as a teen. Oh, wow. So it was a very full circle moment. <laughs> um, but I think I, I think still up until finals night, I didn't have any expectations of winning because I was coming in as a newcomer. Some other girls have been there five, six or seven plus years. Uh-huh. And I don't know. I didn't want it to get to my head that like you got two prelim awards. So that guarantees you a spot in the finals. I don't think that's ever Mm -hmm. the case. There have definitely been situations where girls who've been top of their group for the first two nights didn't even make it into finals. Uh, uh. So, yeah, because on top of all of those, you're thinking about, you know, your academics, your private interview, your essays that you submitted for other awards. So so all all that adds up. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you never really know. Yeah. Okay. But then you hear your name top 10. Top 10, yep. And you're like, okay, this is, this <laughs> is a good thing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is happening. And then how long between they announced the top 10 and when they announced the winner? How long is that? Um, so when they announced top 10, all of the, so we actually had a top 11 because we added a people's choice award, but oh. you didn't know who it was until okay. the very end. Um, once those top 11 are announced, you basically recompete. 
Oh. So all 11 of you go through every single phase of competition except for the private interview again. Um, and this time they also added more on stage questions. So you had both a question that they could ask you, which was a continuation of your interview with the judges. And then you also had a topic question where it could be one word like, um, space exploration or uh-huh. it could be climate change or uh-huh. abortion any single topic wow. and you speak to it for 30 seconds <laughs> yeah so you didn't know which one like oh my goodness it was the most nerve-wracking component of competition wow. can you tell us what your question was mine was about cyberbullying cyber yeah. Bullying. okay yeah okay. and then Once you compete for talent, evening gown, and the first part of the onstage question, um, then they narrow it down to top five. And those Uh, top five then get asked another question, which is about um, a situation that a Miss California might be able to face. So it could be like, if you met a long-term sponsor of Miss California and they asked you to do a photo shoot in... um, not so well covered clothing would you do it that could be a question or you know um if you're faced with cyberbullying online for promoting your social impact initiative how would you handle that situation because these are actually experiences that miss californias have had in the past Uh Uh yeah so yeah it it could be almost anything yep anything and everything under the sun (laughs) okay can we can we practice a question Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to throw out a one-word question. All Just right. give me a 30-second answer. Mm-hmm. All right. And your word is boba. Boba. Yeah. One of the most sensational culinary breakthroughs, um, as well as cultural celebrations of our Asian heritage. I love the fact that there are so many boba stores in San Francisco that really pay homage to our Asian heritage. And I've been lucky enough to work with an organization or a company called Twirl Milk Tea that's (laughs) taken a twist on the classic Taiwanese milk tea and bottled it up and made it accessible to every single person in the United States. So we are bridging the gap between Asian and American culture. Oh, man. (laughs) <laughs> i'm speechless i'm you're just, sweating <laughs> yeah so you just you just have to just think okay try to apply this to you know larger society and 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 whatever it is make it sound important and you know wow i think honestly it's like being able to tie your own personal story to yeah, it because you know like you can preach facts but unless you tell kind of like a personal narrative like people yeah. are like oh okay that was an okay answer yeah, so cyberbullying i could see how you could do that mm-hmm. And then it's always good to rep your hometown, right? Oh, always good. A little bit. Got to have a little <laughs> SF pride. <laughs> oh, man. I can, I can imagine. That's just, there's, because anything could be anything. It'd be mm-hmm. like, you know, sweaters or <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> podcasts. What do you think about podcasts? Yeah, wow. That's crazy. You're the quintessence of everything I want to be because oh I, I know it's ironic. <laughs> it's ironic because I'm speaking on a podcast, but mm. public speaking is like my greatest fear. Same. I have yeah. so much trouble with it. So, yeah, it's it's terrifying because I think especially when you have like a spotlight on you and even like a mic is kind of like a spotlight. Like hundreds of people. Yeah, yeah, it puts scrutiny or at least what we perceive as scrutiny mm-hmm. and you know, you're standing on stage and there's a panel. They literally call them a panel of um interviewers. But in our heads, it's they're judges, right? So yeah. they're judging our opinion. They're judging how we present ourselves. So it's scary because you're putting yourself up to be vulnerable. So. Yeah, yeah. And and even though most people, I'm sure most people in the audience want mm-hmm. you to succeed, in your head you're still thinking, "Oh, I'm gonna mess up." Or you know, right, like, they're waiting for me to slip up yeah, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How do you do it though? Because you make it look so effortless. Oh, gosh, lots of practice. And I think it's just like, I won't lie, like, I get up there and I literally shake Mm -hmm. until I get off stage. So do you have to hold your hands against your stomach as high as you can? When they say, like, the power woman pose before you get on stage, like, it's very cheesy, but it works wonders because it forces you not to clench, like, Uh, your hands and, like, create more adrenaline. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. blood pressure. It forces you to breathe. Um, and a firm foundation under you. Exactly. Wait, wait, what is it? Because I yeah. could use this tip. Oh my gosh. It's literally you like stand with your hands on your hips and you stand with your feet like shoulder width apart Superwoman. and roll your shoulders back and puff out your chest. 
And like it helps. It looks so stupid when people are like passing by and they're like, Why are you standing like that? And yeah. you're like, Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, that's yeah. amazing. I love yeah. it. All right. Big yeah. Leo energy. I know. Exactly. <laughs> Bring out the inner lioness. Oh yeah. But I think also just like reminding myself to be grateful that I've gotten to live a lot of incredible experiences that I can speak to. Mm -hmm. And those are personal journeys that only I know. And that's like an opportunity to share them. So I think that's been something that's helped to reassure my, my confidence or perceived confidence on stage. <laughs> yeah. And kind of a funny moment. And I don't know if you're embarrassed about this. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> so they announce your name. They go, and Miss California 2022 is Catherine, no, Miss San Francisco. And then you, you point to the other person and then... Oh, my God. Yeah. Okay. Were you just not sure what happened? You were just weren't, weren't expecting that at all or what happened? I think, I'll be honest, I kind of just like blacked out in that <laughs> moment. Um, but I forgot that they actually announced like the winner. Not so, the runner up. Yeah. So when I heard Miss San Francisco, I thought like, okay, like I'll just step aside and let this girl have her moment, right? Uh -huh. And then my friends behind. They're like, it's you. They're like, go there. that way. And I was like, which way? So, yeah. I was also bawling my eyes out because yeah. of the interview award, which kind of sure. was very emotional. So not in the most sound emotional state. You were ready to point. burst at that yeah. point. Yeah, I was ready to sleep. <laughs> it's like, can I just go back to the sofa and take a nap? <laughs> Funny that you asked about Vova earlier because I texted him my family that morning they're like what do you want to do after i was like i just want to go <laughs> to my hotel room sleep and drink boba <laughs> win or lose I'm having yeah, a boba. <laughs> exactly yeah that's very cool so you had that moment you when did it sink in has it sunk in yet or <laughs> when did that actually sink in that you'd you are miss california you know so many people have asked me like have you settled into your role as miss california and i think honestly no I think I'm denying myself that satisfaction of being like, I am Miss California because I've always grown up and thinking that there's always so much more that can be done. And, you know, I might have earned that title on June 25th, but that just means I have reset the clock of 365 days to prove like what mm -hmm. it is I did to deserve this crown yeah. and what can I do to leave a legacy. So I think until I give up my crown, I won't give myself the satisfaction of saying like, <laughs> I am a Miss California. So yeah. 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 And and it's just so busy too, right? You've been yeah. like nonstop doing interviews and appearances. You want to know a very embarrassing story? Sure. I got ready for an event yesterday, frantic because I was already running late around five o'clock. I show up to the venue. I look at my calendar. The event is September 22nd, not <laughs> oh, August 22nd. Oh, only one month early. <laughs> yeah. hey, at least they can't call oh, me out man. for not being prepared. So. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just been a lot of, I saw you on the news. I've seen yeah. you, you're going to visit some schools. What are some, some, some of the things that you have done and you're going to do? Yeah. So basically right after I got the title, I ended up doing a mini whistle stop tour. So I got to interview with CVS in Fresno, um, as well as Keys 24. Um, and that was my first kind of public announcement of talking about my experience. And then I was able to visit one of our major corporate sponsors, the American Pistachio Growers. They're uh -huh. incredible, fun people. Um, got to visit the um, City Hall of Fresno, then came back, did... Oh, gosh, I think nine photo shoots in one week. <laughs> that was a lot. Yeah. Very fun. And these are official ones for the... Official and more so like in a friend's collaboration capacity because uh -huh. it was just like a fitting occasion. Yeah. It happened to be because I was in Los Angeles for about a week and a half. Okay. Right after went to my hometown of Sonoma County to attend the Sonoma County Fair, which is like the biggest event right, of the right. year. Um, and also do a backpack drive for kids going back to school. Uh -huh. And then right after flying to Dallas for Miss America's Outstanding Teen and Miss America Orientation. Oh, wow. And then, so this is my first kind of week back in San Francisco oh, wow. with a routine, um, or more or less of a routine, uh -huh, I would say. Uh -huh. And then tomorrow morning, I will be doing an interview with ABC7. So wow. very excited about that. <laughs> I feel like I should already know this, but what are your actual responsibilities as a Miss San Francisco or Miss California after yeah. you've earned the title? 
Yeah. So I think the biggest one they emphasize of our four core pillars. So the four core pillars are service, style, scholarship, and success. For ours, it's really oriented towards service. So for me, I really want to be very involved in the community. Um, and so right now I'm in talks with uh, a couple of schools in Los Angeles for my next visit in November to go there and do a champions chat series where I talk to kids about, you know, what it is they champion in life. How can they be courageous? And then particularly for 10th through 12th graders, helping them kind of navigate the struggles of, you know, applying to colleges and all the scariness yeah. of that happening. We don't know anything about that. No. We do don't we? know <laughs> anything. <laughs> Can't say lived experience or anything like that. Can, um, you, can you do a recording and send it uh, send it over to my friend? Oh, my gosh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, so service in terms of that. And then also I had mentioned an organization before, but... Urban Alchemy, which is helping to address some of the most hard-hitting homelessness and crime problems in major cities like San Francisco and Los Angeles. So this morning, I actually had a meeting with one of the co-founders, and we talked about, you know, how can we amplify the voice of this organization? Because they're doing tremendous work, but I think they're getting, I guess, swamped by other more kind of well-known mainstream ones. Um, So service in terms of that, and then... Obviously, helping to expand the organization, so bringing on more corporate sponsors, bringing in more candidates, maybe like yourself, to potentially compete for Miss California in the future. You have a talent. You're very smart. You're well-spoken. <laughs> oh, absolutely not. I can't. I cannot speak out loud. Just hearing about it, you get nervous. <laughs> exactly. Nervous. But You're I mean, doing a great job. I mean, so. I appreciate it, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So really just being an advocate. And then for me personally, my mission is to be the best possible ambassador to California because I think if you have this title you might as well be like what they see on the face when you pass through the border of California like welcome to California yeah Yeah. so um I definitely want to do that so I have a couple projects lined up um that are in the works but yeah, yeah. And, and you're still doing stuff with the Asian American community as well. Yes. So that's really cool. Yeah. So I'm actually hosting the Mid Autumn Moon Festival in Chinatown uh-huh. this weekend. Uh-huh. And then tomorrow I mentioned I was meeting Sabrina. We are actually spotlighting um, uh, Hong A Bakery, the Red A Bakery. Uh-huh. And they're going to teach me how to make mooncakes. All right. So we're going to spotlight that. <laughs> so so fun. cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For a foodie like me, this is a dream come true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So I, I noticed that you have some free time from your work schedule. So are you not working <sighs> right now? I mean, not working at the at the financial firm. Yeah. So that was actually something that happened right after. Okay. So basically from June 25th through July 4th, I was still working at my company. Um, I very quickly realized trying it's to do so an 18 hard. hour job yeah. plus 10 hours of pageant a day means you're operating on borrowed time and your mental sanity is quickly going out the window. Um, But my company was actually very, very supportive. I was actually really stressing over how to break it to my bosses because I hold a lot of loyalty Mm -hmm. to whatever company or whatever group I am a part of. Um, So I felt like, you know, I just hit my one year mark. Am I technically kind of deserting at like 22 years old and just being like, I'm just going to go on a sabbatical. Mm -hmm. But it was really amazing and heartwarming and quite frankly, tear jerking when all four of my advisors called me individually and said, you know, we're proud of you. If you were our daughter, we would tell her and encourage her to do the same thing as what you're doing. So I was like, this means so much to me. (laughs) Um, So I am taking a leave of absence up until Miss America. So right after, then I will be returning to work. Um, Mm -hmm. But for now, I get to really focus on doing this fun, creative job. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there'll be another 40 years you can work. (laughs) Exactly, Uh yeah. Even one of my advisors was like, don't look back and think at 22, 23, you're sitting behind a computer trudging away at Excel for another review season (laughs) when you could have been meeting people all across the state. So I was like, makes a good point. So Yeah, I mean, this is once in a lifetime. (laughs) Exactly. 365 days versus 36 years of working. So Right, trust me. I've I've been there. I've been doing it for 27 (laughs) years. There's plenty of time to work. Yeah, yeah. So I'm grateful. Cool. So we're going to be preparing for Miss America yeah. and doing our, our visits. Anything else on the horizon for you? 
Maybe a, a break? Do you get a break at all? you get to travel at all? Or uh, You know, actually, after this call, I'm going to be calling some of my best college friends. We are trying, trying, trying to finally plan a trip to Korea oh, wow. after so many postponements because of covid uh-huh. so we'll see if our trip actually leaves the group chat and actually <laughs> <laughs> takes I mean, off. it's well deserved oh yeah. yeah for sure but i think all these travel to like los angeles and stuff it's been really fun so yeah, yeah. it's amazing to go from you know from our little city to repping us you know which is which is great mm-hmm. to repping a state with what do we have? 39 million. You know, we have a millions, millions of people yeah. in our state and you're representing all of them. That's a big, you know, so are you, are you, are you slated to go pretty much to the four corners of our California or? That is my goal. I told my committee that my goal is to visit every single county where we have a local title holder, because I think a lot of the times local title holders after the state competition kind of lose their spark for serving their community because suddenly there's no technical end goal. Yeah, so yeah. I want to just make Miss California relevant and make her presence kind of relatable again. Um, wow. I think the problem in the past is that, you know, you're a state title holder and it's like when you say the name Miss New York, Miss California, Miss Texas, anything like that, there's a certain sense of like, untouchability Mm. or like you can't approach her but for me like i will happily squat for 20 minutes talking to kids in the middle Uh of the street uh if i if i have to um so i just want to be kind of a big sister now to all of these local titles well i mean as exciting as your your new position is it still warms my heart that you are a potato at heart and yeah. that on any given Saturday night, you might be on your sofa watching a K-drama with your roommate. I feel exposed right now. <laughs> that, somehow, that somehow makes me feel like the She's world is like good. She's just like us. The world is right, yeah. Yes. Even Miss California can be a potato. That's that. I enjoy that. I think it's true. Like That's the thing about relatability. It's like, you. yes, we are... We hold an expectation to ourselves and the organization holds us um, to a standard of being presentable all the time. But at the same time, we also have to recognize that for all the fancy glittery galas or hosting or MC opportunities and podcasts and interviews that we do, like there's a lot of work that goes into it. And there's a lot of times where it's not glamorous. I'm literally cold calling or emailing people for up to 18 hours a day. And I'm like exhausted by the end of it. So... But it's like, it makes it all worth it when someone after the fact kind of either sends you a thank you card or emails you and just says, like, thank you for making my daughter's day today. Like, she met a real life princess. And then, uh-huh. like, I've gotten a couple of those and I've been like yeah. in my room crying because it That's just makes I it worth feel. it. That's how I feel when I see you. <laughs> you met a real life spud potato. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's yeah. cool because, you know, we, I, I don't want to say we knew you when. You know, you were already Miss San Francisco, but you know, you're just so relatable and you're, you're just cat from Sonoma yeah. you know, and you just, you're, you're still the same person. And I don't know if I, I told you, but when I messaged her, I was like, Hey, uh, do you remember us? We're the infatuation. <laughs> <laughs> of course you guys definitely, that's the thing though, is I really do believe like every single person comes into your life for a reason. And, you know, people who take time out of their day and you guys have gone like a above and beyond to like help support me and like give me a platform <laughs> to talk about what I'm passionate about and what do I want to do throughout my year as Miss San Francisco or Miss California. But it's like people like that who have gone out of their way where they technically don't benefit from your personal journey. Like that is so heartwarming and that's a kind of gratitude I can never fully be able to express in two words. So thank you. <laughs> no, so it's been a great ride and we, and we're not done yet. What what date are we looking at in December? December. You know, I would love to know, but we still don't even oh, know as okay. candidates. So we're yeah. gonna we'll update the audience. So we're gonna be manifesting and sending waves to where are we going? We're going to Connecticut. Uncasville, Connecticut. Uncasville, Connecticut. All right. So uh you did mention loyalty. Yes. So if you get to be Miss America, don't forget <laughs> us. You're coming back, right? I'll do a little plug and be like, yo, my friends at the Infatuation <laughs> Podcast, I see you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you don't have to do that, but at least come back and do an update with us. If you, Sounds good. If you get to be Miss America. So thanks so much for coming down. Maddie, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. I'm so happy that I finally was able to meet you in person. I know, same. 
but we are uh, so we are speaking to Catherine Liang, and you can follow her at Miss America CA, mm-hmm. and you can follow us at the Infatuation Podcast on Instagram or Facebook. Thanks so much for coming in, Cat, and thanks for just representing our city and representing so much, you know, uh, and just being a great ambassador for for just people like us. Oh my gosh, well, thanks for having me and for helping this little spud potato along her journey. <laughs> so, <laughs> All right. I forgot I had one more, uh, I had one more thing. Um, I just did an interview with a makeup person. Oh. And she That's said... That's very random. <laughs> I know I was going to call you. I needed your help, Maddie. But uh, <laughs> she started her own makeup company and she said, uh, yeah, if you want to try out some of her stuff and, you know, see how it goes, she'll send it What's to you. What's her name? Uh, her name, okay, she's Thai. So her name is Kate Apiratana Pimanchai. She has a company called Moshika Beauty. And you know what she does? She does um, adhesive eyeliner that lashes to stick to. So you don't need glue. That is so helpful. Yeah. She said it's it's kind of revolutionary. She said it's kind of like saves you a lot of trouble. I would be totally willing to be a guinea pig for that. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> she'll send you a pack. And, uh, oh my gosh. Thank and you. for infatuation listeners out there, you get 20% off if you type in AsianPod20 uh, when you check out on the coupon code. So yeah, check it out. Uh, help our friend Kate out. Uh, she's she's great. She's got a great story. She dropped out of medical school to start this wow. company. And she came to America when she was 12. So it's a really good story. So go listen to that episode, episode 45. And go ahead and go to mashkabeauty.com and type in that code. And you, too, can save 20%. All right. Thank you, everybody, for listening. That does it for episode 47. Thank you to our guests and our super producer for dropping by. And thank you for everyone out there listening. I hope that you learned a little bit more about the process of becoming Miss California and hopefully Miss America. And so for those of you who are out there, uh, do you have a message for people out there struggling with courage or struggling with confidence, Kat? I guess one thing I've always instilled in myself is to be courageous is to start with being your best self, but to be a champion of courage is to inspire others to find what it is they represent And for me, I've always thought about what it is that I represent. I can sum it up in one phrase. It's to have an open heart, to have an open mind, and then strive to be the sunshine in other people's life. All right. (laughs) You heard it here from Miss California. And on behalf of Miss California, Catherine and Madison and myself, we hope that you're all happy, healthy, and safe out there. Thanks again for listening, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. 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 Bye.